Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is a CRKT um, Tueto. That's how I'm going to be pronouncing it. I'm not sure if, if that's correct. I couldn't find any information on that word or, or what it might mean, but Tueto is what we're, is what we're going to call it. Uh, this is a brand new for 2021 CRKT. Uh, it's a Jesper Voxnes design. Pretty cool. Uh, and it does feature CRKT's new spring assist uh, system, which I'm not sure if it has a name. Uh, if it does, someone can let me know. I haven't been able to find one uh, for it yet. But anyways, let's jump right in with some size comparisons and let's start with, out with our regular rats. There is the one. And here's the two. So as you can see, Kind of in the, kind of in between there. Uh, you're looking at, I always forget to do specs. I'll try and do better with that. But you're looking at a blade of just a, let me do this in front of the camera, just a little tiny bit over, eh, we'll call it three, well, I guess we can measure from there. Uh, just under 3.5 inches so it's a size that i personally like uh, let's go ahead and go on with some more size comparisons here's our bench made bug out so pretty much bug out size not too far off and our pm2 there you go uh, let's bring out our civivi crowd Ugh. Drop everything over there. Here's the Elementum. You know, I think I drop something in basically every video. Here's the Praxis. Clumsy, 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 I guess. So again, kind of an in-between range there. And let's go ahead and do our, our Gerbers. There's the mini paraframe, the regular paraframe, so bigger than both of those. And we will finally close up here with some fairly recognizable CRKT models. Here we've got the squid, so quite a bit bigger there. And here we have the CEO. So, which CEO is kind of hard to see because it sits up on its clip like a ramp, but basically the same length. Quite a bit of height difference though. So, there are size comparisons out of, out of the way. Uh, I am really, really excited to talk about this knife. Um, this was when the new CRKT uh, 2021 lineup was announced. This was a knife that I knew I wanted to get my hands on. And yeah, it, so I did. <laughs> this was the first one I went and got my hands on. And uh, there's there's a lot to talk about here. A lot to talk about. But let's start off by going and cutting some stuff up. All right, let's cut some cardboard. So I've got some scraps laying around here from last review. I need to get more cardboard. I really, really miss all the boxes I used to do. I don't like this, this thin stuff, but whatever. Jeez. So I guess I should say before I go any further, the steel they're using here is that 4116 stuff and I don't like that steel at all. It doesn't hold an edge for very long. And I've had knives with that steel in the past and it seems to just roll very, very easy for some reason. But man, I probably, this, this knife probably should have been sharpened up before I tried doing this, but. You know, looking at it, you'd think it'd be a, a fantastic, fantastic, uh, 
slicer and unfortunately it's not it's really it's really not I mean even on this thin stuff it's very unsatisfying yeah I haven't measured it behind the edge but It feels pretty thick. It's flat grind and it, just, it feels very, very thick. So, yeah, it looks thick too, geez. And it's a rather uneven grind too, which we'll talk about a little bit more, but there, you saw it cut. It's not amazing. Now, how about in the pocket? So, as far as carry goes, it's pretty nice. It's Tucks away real well. The flipper tab is pretty, pretty small, so it doesn't get in the way too much. So you can get your hand down in there. Uh, the clip itself looks like a really good clip. Yeah, that looks like a great clip. Uh, it is reversible, which is awesome, but it's very tight, very very tight. And so when you're putting it in your pocket, it. It does fight you a little bit. It's not the worst. It's not like cold steel levels of fighting, but it's, it could definitely be better. Um, yeah, it's a, it's not an amazing carry. We'll put it like that. All right, so let's get back to the table and let's look at this guy a little closely, talk about what I like and uh, what I don't like. All right, so CRKT Tueto. What am I liking? What am I not liking? So let's start out with what I'm liking and get the most obvious one out of the way, the looks. I think this is a, a really pretty knife. Really, really pretty knife. Um, I do, you know, th th there's something about this color of green that appeals to me. You know, I know I'm a, <laughs> I'm a blue knife guy, but this, th this is my second favorite color to have a knife in this, this OD green. That's really, really nice. I think, you know, I love Voxnay's designs. He, he has a, his, his aesthetic, his aesthetic, oh my gosh, that was pathetic. His aesthetic just really, really speaks to me. His his design language is something that really resonates with me, so I appreciate that very much. And this is just a just a good looking knife. You know, this is one of those knives that would be equally at home just in your pocket as an EDC, and it can also pull double duty as kind of a um, kind of a gentleman's carry knife in some ways. Sorry about that. I'm adjusting my camera a little bit. Um, next thing I like. Oh, the pocket clip is reversible. I always like to see that, and it only has one screw because the clip is held in place uh, by these um, by this little notch, this little cutout in the scale. I like that because it prevents the clip from getting any kind of wiggle. I cannot stand clip wiggle. It's it's a pet peeve of mine. So yeah. Another thing I like. This kind of goes back more to the design, but I like how the blade folds up completely, well, almost completely into the handle. Uh, that's something with knives that I'm a sucker for. I, I really am. And just to bring out a CRKT that we had here earlier, you know, like the CEO, you know, stuff like that just really speaks to me. And I think it's it's very clean and classy. So that's great. Uh, another thing that's great is this guy has, let's see if we can look in there. Yeah, see that? Grab my flashlight. Internal stop pins. And I think that's really, really cool. Um, I, I always like internal stop pins just because, you know, they're a little bit different. And also, I don't know, that, they, they lend you a little more, a little more protection against side-to-side -side blade play. So that's, that's always appreciated. Um, next thing, you know, the, uh, 
the branding on this blade. CRKT is is you know pretty well known for over the top branding, but they they've managed to uh, to keep it kind of low key here, which which I I, I like, I like. Uh, next, ergos, fine ergos. Um, these are kind of walking the line between just fine and good, and I've got no problem with that whatsoever. Another thing that's good, sharpening choil. You'll be able to sharpen this knife for a very long time before you get up to that plunge grind. So that's awesome. Uh, I love this little accent back here. I CRKT has been doing that a lot more. It's great. I really, really like that. And yeah, so let's get on to the last thing that I like about this knife, which is uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Um, and that is the assist system here. So CRKT, as you can see here, this little symbol is their symbol for the IKBS bearings. But this knife came out of package with a torsion spring. And let's see if I've got that laying around. This should be it right here. Yeah. Get out of there, buddy. So, inside this knife, when you first get it, is this little spring. And it's a pretty stout spring. Pretty stout indeed. That's a very, very nice spring. And so when you when I got this out of the box, it had one of the snappiest assisted opening. Not it, it, it was just it, it had one of the fast one of the snappiest assisted openings I'd ever felt. And it was it was very nice. The and the whole point with their uh, their spring assist is that, that their new version is that it's supposed to have a bias towards closure. And I've seen other videos of other knives that have the same new system where they'll do like that and then you have to overcome the spring to close it. Mine felt more like, like after I, after I unlocked it, it just kind of fall to there and then I push it when it got to about here, it felt like it got sucked back in. So, I mean, it was, it was different, but you know, I, I, I'm probably going to get my hand on a couple of, a couple more of these assists to see, um, what they're all about. However, that's not the best part. You know, the spring assist, it is a very unique system. Having a knife that's spring assisted with ball bearings, I'll toot my own horn here. I, uh, before CRKT did this, I always used to think, you know, that'd be kind of interesting to see a knife company do. And the reason I thought it'd be interesting is because then you could deassist the knife and have it still work pretty well, potentially. And as you can tell, I have deassisted this knife. I have a whole video about it. Um, I'll either put a card up here or a link in the description or a, a link at the end of the video, whichever uh, we'll see. But anyways, I have a video on deassisting this guy and it's very easy. It's very, very easy. In fact, it was one of the easiest and most satisfying deassists I've ever done. Because literally all you have to do is take off this top scale, remove the spring, put the scale back on, and the knife functions as a manual flipper. And is it the best manual flipper? No, no. But it's one of the best deassistings of a flipper I've ever done. It was certainly one of the fastest and easiest. I've, de I've done deassist before. And usually there's always a little bit of, um, you know, messing around to, to try and get it tightened down to where the detent will, you know, allow it to fire, but there's no blade play. And that's kind of hard. Sometimes you even have to go in there and modify the detent a little bit. Um, some Something I've done with knives, I've de-assisted in the past, is a lot of assisted knives have got nylon washers. And something I tend to do is if I de-assist a knife and it has nylon washers, I'll swap those out for phosphor bronze and lube it up real good. This guy, and, and honestly, this guy's running pretty dry right now. Um, so his action probably could be improved, but it's still nothing to shake a stick at. It's a good action, especially considering this knife used to be assisted. And so I think that is the greatest part of this knife is because CRKT, you know, assists are very polarizing, 
especially in the EDC, uh, especially like in the knife enthusiast world, because, you know, not a lot of people like assists anymore. You know, if you're an enthusiast, what, what most people look for is an action that's good and snappy without having to rely on a cheat, like a spring. For an average, just an average person on the street, uh, the spring assists are actually really good. In fact, a lot of people that I know who aren't knife people, but are people who use knives, they prefer a spring assist. I used to prefer spring assist before I became an enthusiast back when I was just purely a user. And I, I, I do think spring assists have their place, but I'm glad that this knife gives you the, the option to easily and effectively de-assist it. So that's, that, that's great. Um, it comes with a, uh, comes with this little card in the case. Like I said, it just says assisted opening. I'm not sure if this new mechanism has a specific name yet or not, but I believe this is their LCK Elite, I think. I'm not sure. I might get one of those, but yeah, I think that's the greatest part of this knife is that it's a different assist. Even when this guy's assisted, it does feel different. It's very, very snappy, almost like an auto. But if you don't like an assisted knife, this is one of the easiest de-assists you can do. You know, it already has the ball bearings and pivot. The detent is already pretty good. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's very, very easy to make this a manual knife. So in my opinion, that's the very, very best part of this. Now, let's talk about what's not so good. Because unfortunately, I think there's quite a bit. All right, so let's talk about what I'm not liking about the CRKT Tueto. Uh So first off, um, this knife is a little bit uncomfortable. And I know I put the ergonomics in what I liked, but I'm not talking about ergos. So out of the box, flipping this guy was a nightmare. This flipper tab is so freaking sharp. This knife, th th this is very sharp. And with that assist, it's very, very strong because this knife does have a strong detent so you can still flip it when it's manual. But this here, it was just so, so sharp. And it just, ugh. And not only that, but then to unlock it, look, they don't give you very, th th there's no cutout on this scale to access the liner. What they did instead for the lock was they, they raised the lock. They made it proud of the, of the scales and put the, 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 this jimping on it, which isn't as sharp as a flipper tab, but still pretty sharp. And just ramming your thumb there to unlock it, I find it better to just kind of like jam, if you have a little bit of a thumbnail, just jam that in there, but man, it just hurts. So I never, never like that. In fact, actually, let's grab this piece of paper. Let's see what we can, if I can cut this paper with this flipper tab, I'm going to be very, very sad. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a sharp little guy. It's, it's a sharp little guy. Okay, I'm just going to scratch up my, my table. But yeah, very sharp, very uncomfortable, not a big fan. Um, there's nothing on the blade, no jimping or anything, which wouldn't necessarily be a problem if the back of the blade wasn't sh so dang sharp. I mean, this is like a bushcrafting knife. You could really strike a fire steel with this, which, no, th th this is not a bushcrafting knife. So I got this little bit of rock I found. See, this is a great knife to take with me when I'm out. In case anyone watching didn't know, I'm a geologist. And uh, yeah, this would be a great knife for me to take out to test different rock hardnesses. Yeah, that is that is too sharp for an EDC pocket knife. That's just all that out here way too sharp for an edc pocket knife 
way, way too sharp. Um, since we're on the topic of the blade, let's talk about the blade steel. Is that 4116 stuff? I hate that steel. I hate that steel. And this knife here hasn't had any drastic malfunction. In the past, I've had this stuff like, literally, I had a knife in this steel. I can't remember what company it was from. But I was cutting through cardboard. And after, I don't know, 10 or 15 cuts through cardboard, just breaking down boxes, I looked at the end. I noticed it was just starting to hang up. And I looked at the edge, and it was almost one continuous roll. And I was like, well, that, 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 that's not good. And then I got another knife. I think it was a CRKT. The second one I think was a CRKT. What was it? The, uh, I can't remember. I don't have the knife anymore. But, uh, again, just cutting through something, I rolled the tip pretty bad. And so, I don't know. Th this knife hasn't had any suffer, hasn't suffered anything like that yet. But 4116 is a steel that is so bad that this price point, I might complain about it being used as a liner material. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but... Uh, come on, CRKT, can you please give us better steels on these designs? If this knife had a better steel, I would like it. I, I, this would actually be one of my favorite CRKTs if it had a better steel. But as it is, I just, for the price, which, let's talk about the price. This knife here is going to run you between $50, $55. I picked him up for about $53. No. No, that's too much. That's way too much. And I know, I know. Jesper Vaknes designed this. I've still got rock dust. <sighs> Anyways. I know, Jesper Voxnay, Jesper Voxnay, my bad, sorry, uh, designed this, and designers come with a price tag, and I, I know, I know, but would it really kill you, CRKT, to put this in, D not even D2, actually, I've decided that I don't want CRKT to just put D2 on all their knives, you know, they use 12C27 fairly regularly, why can't they just make that their standard? If they made 12C27 their standard, I think a lot of people would be pretty happy. It's not a great steel, but it's a good enough steel. Unlike this 4116. This is 4116, that's the kind of steel that you find on like uh, like cheaper kitchen knives, but anyways, I do think that this knife is overpriced. And like I said, designers come with a price tag, but this is CRKT Squid. This is designed by Lucas Burnley. The basic versions of this have stainless steel. This is a stainless steel side too, but they've got stainless steel all around instead of this micarta. They have an 8 CR13 in movie blade and nylon washers, and they go for about $23. This is a Blade HQ exclusive with D2, green micarta, and phosphor bronze scales. And this knife costs $33. A $10 upgrade. Honestly, you cannot tell me that this green micarta, this beautiful little uh, backspacer, is also an upgrade too, the phosphor bronze and the phosphor bronze washers and the new D2 blade. You cannot tell me that that was all just a ten dollar upgrade. And of course, this is a Blade HQ exclusive, but CRKT still makes it. They still got to make it. So, you know, if they can take this Burnley design and upgrade it with all these nice materials for just ten dollars, why can't they start making? They're just standard versions with a little bit of bit with some better materials. Or at least charge us less. And maybe there's manufacturing that I don't understand. Maybe maybe there are some some issues there that I, I don't understand, but you know, still. Um a little bit of a rant, but I, I, I'm gonna be ranty about this knife, and I'll tell you why here in a little bit. Uh, another thing I don't like is the clip. I saw this clip in pictures and I was like, 
that looks like a great clip. Even though the, the screw isn't flat, that still looks like a great clip. No, this clip is way too tight. The, the, this clip needs to be loosened up. Just look at that, jeez. I mean, here, you know what? Let's grab out a little pry bar. Introducing my pry bar, the gripper paraframe. <laughs> Wow, that is quite the clip. And on top of this rough G10 texturing, no, nah, no, nah, it doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't work, which is another thing. The texture on this knife could have been brought down just a little bit, just a little bit. But uh, that's, a, that's a small complaint. Um, I already talked about the lock. Uh, oh, that was another thing. Centering. As you can see, my knife is not centered. It was almost centered when I got it. It was, let's see if I can push it over. It looked about like that when I got it. When I took the spring out, though, and adjusted this guy, he did come uncentered. So that's one little hiccup in the deassisting uh, de process, but I mean, the action's pretty good, so. And, and it's not rubbing yet, so I'm not gonna, I'm not making any major complaints. And besides, um, you know, metal, if, metal complex, if you're watching my channel and you've never heard of metal complex, something's wrong with you, uh, <laughs> but you need to, uh, you need to go. He has a video about how to perfectly center a blade. I'll probably be doing that with this knife here, uh, shortly. So I think that covers everything I don't like. Uh, blade steel, terrible, sharp corners everywhere. Access to the lock bar is terrible. The, uh, the lock bar itself is way too sharp. The knife is too expensive, and the clip is just not great. So, let's go on to my final conclusions, because this video is going to be really, really long. All right, so before we get on to the final thoughts and conclusions and opinions and all that, uh, I do want to talk a little bit more about something that I, I alluded to uh, in the um, cutting demonstration, but I, I forgot to mention because I got carried away with my ranting. Uh, this knife obviously doesn't start sh stay sharp for very long, and it's going to be hard to show. Thick behind the edge, and also... How am I going to show this? It has a very uneven grind. I mean... Here, let's look at this side compared to that side. See how small that is compared to how wide it is over here. With this type of steel, it won't be hard for me to fix up on with some sharpening. In fact, I have a, a stone laying around here close by. We're not going to worry about it right now. I, it, that's something I can fix really fast, but still, it's not great to see. And yeah, I haven't sharpened this guy since I've been carrying him, so he is getting to the point of being a little bit duller, but still, whatever. All right, so, um, final opinions. When I got this knife and took it out of the box, I was so excited to experience this new CRKT assist. I was excited to be having this knife that I, I was in love with the looks. I still am. I still am in love with the looks. Jesper Voxne's designs a great looking knife. But the more I carried it and used it, the more I realized that this knife was just kind of letting me down in a lot of ways. And it made me really, really disappointed because I've been really enjoying a lot of CRKT lately. Um, recently, I mean, the same time I got this guy, I upgraded my squid. I used to have one of the, the basic versions, then I got this guy. I've been carrying this guy a lot. I love him. This D2 and my Carta version is so good. This is a great knife. Love that little knife. And, by the way, on those Foster Bronze washers, I took this guy apart, lubed him up. Wow, that is snappy. But, in addition to that guy, last year's Tuna... This was a knife that I am just, I love this knife. It's very comfortable, Lucas Burnley design as well, put together well, 
has a great action despite running on, on on nylon. I got this guy for 36 bucks at a at a brick and mortar store. Great clip. This clip is one of my favorite clips ever. And I was kind of hoping this would be one of those clips. A uh, good clip too. You know, of course, I felt let down by the 8CR14 MOV blade. But this knife is still a knife that's in my EDC rotation. I still carry this occasionally. I love this knife. Another knife that I really, really love from CRKT. The Montosa. I've had this knife for a while. I'm Man, I'm in love with this knife. The ergos are good. It feels solid. Again, complain about the blade steel. But, um... Once I took it apart and cleaned them up and lubed them up, the action got amazing. I love purple. I just, I, I love that knife. And this guy. There are just some things about this knife that don't feel like it has the same, the same quality as, like the Montosa. This knife, I would argue, is overpriced too. This is about a, a $50 CRKT as well. But these handles have really nice milling. They're well, they're, they're comfortable. They're well shaped. The blade is softened on the edges. You have this nice little swedge here. I mean, the blade feels like CRKT gave a dang about making it. You have the reversible clip. It just, it pivot collars too. I love pivot collars. I love them. And it would be cool if this guy had a pivot collar, but that, 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 that's all a really, really long way of saying that this knife didn't live up to what I'd built up for it in my head. And that's, that, that's often, I, I can understand why someone say, well, you know, that's an unfair assessment of a knife because, you know, just because it didn't live up to your expectations, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, I'll agree. It, it, from a reviewing, a reviewing standpoint, Maybe, yeah, judging this knife by the fact that it didn't quite live up to the expectation I set in my head is a little bit funny. But, that being said, somehow this knife feels less than the tuna. Just knocked over my jeez. Oh, <laughs> Is that gonna stay in? Yeah, you know what? We might as well just leave that in. Oh my gosh, that that is that's my sign that I that I'm talking too much. That I'm starting to ramble. Point is, let's get down to <laughs> let's just get down to the facts. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh. Is this a good knife? You know, in a lot of ways, yes. This is a very EDC-focused knife. The ergos are pretty good. It has a unique um, assist system. It's easy to, to mod. It's a great-looking design. But, in my opinion, there are some, some serious flaws. If you don't mind the blade steel, all the more power to you. If you like sharpening... This won't be a problem, but, you know, the clip might need some attention. Some of these sharp edges you might want to do something about. Uh, can I recommend this knife? I can. If you love Jesper Vakne's designs and, you know, you just want to try out CRKT's new assist, I can recommend this knife. Um, however, I will say it did not... It wasn't what I was wanting from this knife, and it, it, it kind of fell short on a couple places. But, you know, hopefully they'll make a TRKT two toe <laughs> as a as a sequel to this. But um, yeah. Uh this is better than. Let's bring out a knife at this. Is, here we go. Here we go. 
Hello, old friend. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm starting to get mean. I love the design of this knife. I love CRKT's new assist. It's very, very nice. This knife itself is a functional knife if you enjoy sharpening and just day-to-day -day opening packages. It'll do just fine for you. Um, but there are a lot of changes that I would really, really like to see. So that's going to be it for me, guys. Uh, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and drop me a like. Uh, comment below and tell me, you know, do you have this knife? What do you think of it? Are you going to get this knife? Um, how much of an, of an idiot am I for knocking over my uh, camera mid-filming? That, that Tease me about that, too. But, um, and uh, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye now.